why do young people want to play money at you? Uh, when I was a kid in the, I was born in 1952, so you know, I was by the late 50s and early 60s, I was a kid. Uh, you know, you wouldn't have dreamed of playing mariachi, even though I used to hear it in my house sometimes every day because that's that was my father's favorite music. Uh, he even used to bring mariachis into the house once a year. He would he was involved with a Mexican uh, sort of philanthropy group. They would bring and they would have a big fiestón. They called it every year, and my father was always the guy in charge of getting the mariachi. So he would go down to Tijuana and bring them up. And, they come to the house. So, you know, they would even be in the house like once a year. And then, you know, I was always hearing them somewhere. But we would never have dreamed of, uh, because it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't even thought of. We weren't, we weren't really interested. We were changing, we were assimilating so fast to, to the uh, American culture or to other musical cultures, whether, whether African American music, rock and roll, jazz, you know. Uh, and you would not have, uh, I mean, the closest we were playing Herb Albert music, you know, he was imitating Mariachi, you know, so I mean, it was it's sort of a, there's, there's this irony about it, but I think if you dig deep into the psychological, cultural aspect of it, um, that was a period where, where um, of course, it's still like that, but uh, being Mexican was, was uh, often uh, something that uh, you were made to be ashamed of. Uh, people, there, the uh, element of discrimination was was high. It's still high, but back then it was almost uh, young children sometimes were embarrassed of their Mexican culture. So, uh, what I'm saying is that in the newer era, that whatever you want to call it, that uh, complex, that embarrassment. Uh, why were people then? Why were we not interested in mariachi? We didn't even think of it. We, we weren't necessarily embarrassed by it, but if you went to your school, and your, which was maybe only half Mexican, I was in sort of an integrated area, although there were a lot of Mexican Americans, uh, you wouldn't have brought it up probably, because it was stigmatized. So I don't think we have that now. The things have changed. So that's going to make a big difference just in the psyche, the psychological aspect of a young person wanting to play mariachi, because he or she is proud of it. See, this is the main thing that goes into why people want to learn it. They're proud of their culture. Uh, and so that is a huge uh, metamorphosis that has occurred. Um, so... It would be interesting to know if, um, if, the, if the people, that, the young people that are driven to play mariachi today might um, be second generation or third generation kind of recovering their roots, or if they are also, you know, well, in Mexico come over and this is... I think that another factor is that wave. there, and all of this has to do with, with yeah. informal education, because this is the, the attitudes that they learn in the home. Uh, a lot of these children would be like, uh, well, I guess it, they could be my grandchildren by now, but 15 years ago they would have been my children. So you have to remember that my generation is, is partly the, and, and some people older than me and younger than me, we're sort of the ones who got involved in these uh, socially, politically, the Chicano movement, for example, uh, which sort of, you know, in many ways was related to the, to the black movement, the African-American the African movement, the civil rights movement. Uh, we became, we sort of changed our attitudes just through the politics of it. Uh, all of a sudden we said, why are, we, uh, why are we not learning about our Mexican culture? Why aren't we more proud of it? Why have we been taught not to be proud of it? So we reacted uh, almost radically, well, radically, definitely. We got mad. So certainly our children are going to learn that attitude of be proud of you. It's not that our parents were not proud, they were. But they were conditioned to sort of uh, the assimilation model, you know, if you uh, my grandparents came to this country from Mexico, so uh, yeah, in the case of my father, he also went back to Mexico, so there was a combination of, of things happening. But they had gone through World War II. Both my parents were war veterans. You know, uh, so, um, you know, there was a lot of psychological stuff going on, you know, but <clears throat> the thing was, you know, you gotta, you've got to <clears throat> become American, and that's, I think that's still the case, fine. But, you also are Mexican, and uh, and I think that's um, 
a lot of what's going on. So these kids are the kids of a generation that reacted, you know, uh, and all of a sudden said, you know, why did we lose this? So, so that is part, especially of the non-formal uh, enculturation. Uh, yeah. That's great. I mean, this, this is heavyweight uh, sort of yeah. stuff. It's great hearing well, from you on these things.